On the fifth day of the battle for Quay, the Marines moved out from the fortified army compound that had stood the original attack and advanced into the empty, abandoned buildings of what was Quay University. Quay, the ancient imperial city. It is to Vietnamese what old Boston is to Americans, where many of its country's leaders are born or educated, where many returned to celebrate Tet a week ago when the fighting began, where many remain hidden in the unknown interior of the resistance. Colonel Cheatham, uh, what's the objective and your what are your men about to do? Well, I've, I've got two companies here that are just about to clear the next two blocks up. Uh, I've got one company in this, in this big building here that I guess is the end of the Way University, and they are going to start firing in support of Foxtrot Company, which will be going up this road here on the left and attempt to take a couple large wall buildings that are on up about five or 600 meters. What kind of fighting is it going to be? It's house to house and from room to room. Nope. Kind of inch by inch. That's, that's exactly what it is. Had you ever expected to experience this kind of street fighting in Vietnam? No, I didn't, and this is the, my first crack at uh, street fighting. I think this is the first time the Marine Corps has been street fighting since Seoul in 1950. And a little bit in Santo Domingo. And a little bit there, yes, right. What's going to happen to civilians who might get caught in there? Well, we're hoping that we don't run into any, any civilians in there right now. If they are, I'm pretty sure there are civilians that are the, what we would consider the bad guys right now. We have certain areas in here that we have blocked off that we know there are friendly civilians and we aren't going to take those under fire. The others? The others, if there's somebody in there right now, they're Charlie as far as we're concerned. Contact. The first sniper shots ricochet around the thick walls of the building, taking the first casualties of the first squad. The snipers, maybe only two or three, are invisible in the buildings beyond the wall. But there is also a machine gun down the street to the left. They have covered every angle but the few feet of dirt and cactus behind this wall and the one 40 feet ahead. The platoon leader has called his men forward. There is to be an assault. First, a barrage of cover fire, and then a charge across the street. The assault. But only one Marine runs forward into the fire, expecting the others to follow, not looking back to find out disappears behind the cover at the wall and before long is shot and wounded. Two other Marines, one of whom is killed, get beyond the wall. And by night and the next day, the Marines have not been fighting. It is inch by shattered inch in the five-day battle for Huey. Much of the news filmed during Tet was flown to Tokyo and fed to New York by satellite. In some cases, only those early satellite feeds remain. The picture's less than perfect, but gripping nonetheless. Here, a Marine corporal moves into the line of fire to rescue a wounded corpsman. A few days later, Don Webster witnessed another act of courage. For days now, they've been fighting their way, bloody inch by inch, down Lenoy Street. And all that time, they could see, down the street, a flagpole. And on it was a Viet Cong flag. Much is left in shambles. As the Marines advance, building after building, the North Vietnamese retreat, building after building, giving up nothing without a fight. Roger, that was a uh, that was some sort of rifle uh, grenade. It came all the way through the building, hit up, hit over the line. Have, have you pushed forward? Hold on! In the front ranks of the Marines, a man is suddenly wounded. He's been hit in the eye by shrapnel from an enemy B-40 rocket. Despite the obvious pain, doctors later told him he will not lose the eye. And although the sound of the blast punctured his eardrum, he will not lose his hearing. But all the time, the Marines have had their eyes on that enemy flag. It's flying on a pole in front of the province capitol building. 
got, uh, got Charlie on the run behind him. They're cutting him down now. As soon as the big one's secure, Finally, the assault. They're approaching what used to be the most important government building in the province. Now, with no province government at all, it has no significance at all, except for the flag in front. With fighting still going on just a few yards away, Marines have risked their lives to pull down this symbol. No one is quite sure where the American flag came from in the middle of a battle. Like so many things, when you need something, someone just happens to have it. There was no bugler, and the other Marines were too busy to salute, but not often is a flag so proudly raised. All right. All right, give me this, then. Hard hotel company. <laughs> Keep it. Are you finished? We want to get the hell out. Hey, That's really a surprise. Come on out Stay alive. Hey, get over here and help me drag this man out of here. Rimming the edge of the courtyard, someone noticed small holes camouflaged. In almost every one, there's an enemy soldier. A few dead from the day shooting, but some still alive. Others are not so lucky. Marines fire into the holes. Another one is lucky. He stuck his arms out of the hole and surrender as the Marine approached, and he's pulled out alive and uninjured. Somebody find a piece of blindfold, a piece of rag over there. Get some of that over there. Hey, John! Sometimes these prisoners can be very useful, giving valuable intelligence information. But in this battle in Hue, it's been going on for so long now, and there are so many prisoners, there's really nothing left to be learned. For one of the few times in the Vietnam War, the U.S. Marines are really in their element in this battle in Hue. But right now, this province headquarters is the front line and they're holding an assault much like those that have made them famous in other wars. And to a great extent, this assault is being won or lost on the basis of sheer courage. And there's no shortage of that among the Marines. Don Webster, CBS News, in Hue, South Vietnam.